Is everybody ready? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. And I want to welcome everyone to the 2022 swearing-in ceremony for the Charlotte City Council. Again, thanks for coming. And I am now going to officially call this meeting to order. Now, I'd like to begin with introductions from the dais, and we'll start with our city clerk. Stephanie Kelly, city clerk. Good evening, everyone. Matt Newton, District 5. Good evening, Dimple Ajmira, at large. Braxton Winston, at large. Good evening, Renee Johnson, District 4. Greg Phipps, outgoing at large. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Jones, city manager. I'm Vi Lyles, and I serve as mayor. Julie Eisolt, mayor pro tem, and at large for a few more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Larkin Eggleston, District 1. Malcolm Graham, District 2. Tara Bakari, District 6. Good evening, Victoria Watlington, District 3. Ed Driggs, District 7. Patrick Baker, City Attorney. I want to thank all the staff and the volunteers that made it possible for all of us to come to this wonderful meeting and have this time. And I also want to especially thank the family and friends here who are coming to watch our new council be sworn in. It is great to be here in person after COVID and a pandemic. And we are really particularly um, happy to be able to do this in person because we're going to be able to acknowledge the service of our council and celebrate both our new and returning council members. Um, to start this evening, we will have an invocation by Pastor Dwayne Butler of the World Worship Church, followed by a presentation of colors from the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Honor Guard. I'd like to ask those who would like to and are willing to stand. We will stand through to the time of um, our Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would be willing or would like to stand, please do. I would now like to have our color guard from Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department present the colors. After the pastor. Yes. And I hope my cell phone and my purse is off somewhere. <laughs> well, Pastor, please um, help us begin this evening. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your continued grace and mercy given to the city of Charlotte over so many years. You have been faithful to us in our successes, in our difficult moments. And so we pray now for your guidance in this next level of growth service and unity. We pray for the City Council of Charlotte as you direct and lead them into all truth. And for our mayor for your continued blessing of leadership on her life and those of every city official. We ask that you give them wisdom, keen eyes and sharp understanding to navigate the arduous times that may be ahead, as well as the triumphant moments found all around them. We thank you for the wonderful service of the outgoing council members. They have served their city with diligence and care. And now we pray for the members who come into that same service and the responsibility and high call to serve the citizens of Charlotte. Lord, would you cause each council member to remember their duty in each proceeding and meeting? We understand that we may not always agree, but Father, Allow us to be unified in our service for our city. We ask for grace to lead, words seasoned with peace, minds tied together in unity, hearts full of love for all people of Charlotte. And finally, we ask for your blessing on this ceremony and your presence to be with us as often as we come together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now... Our honor guard will come and post the colors. He said, of ten, show, carry, color, forward, mark.
Ready? Turn. Detail. Ball. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Thank you for Andronetta's um, wonderful voice and making that national anthem really something special for us. And so now, please be seated. I have the distinct pleasure this evening to present this year's Mayor Citizen Awards. It is a tradition at this ceremony to offer awards to distinguished members of our community who have served with distinction, honor, selflessness, and courage. Tonight, I am proud to present the Mayor's Award in honor of Richard Vinroot to an individual who has displayed unselfish leadership in support of the community, Michael Marsicano. Please. have had an impact on one city like Michael has had on Charlotte. From the beginning of his career here in 1989 as president of the Arts and Science Council to his current role as the CEO of the Foundation for the Carolinas, Michael's fingerprints are all over our community. 
and we are the better for it. Under his leadership, the Foundation for the Carolinas has grown to, into one of the largest philanthropic organizations in the country. A few years ago, Michael joined an incredibly prestigious group of people when he was named one of the top nonprofit leaders in the country. He joined a group of people that include Bill and Melinda Gates. Why don't you tell them to bring more money for us? So. <laughs> and Colin Powell, and was cited for his leadership with economic opportunity and upward mobility. And that was before he took on the task of raising a quarter of a billion dollars to create more economic opportunity and upward mobility through the Mayor's Racial Equity Initiative. In the early days of COVID, Michael and the foundation jumped in and helped start the first financial support programs for our business community. And when the federal funds began to flow, the city partnered with the foundation to distribute tens of millions of dollars to thousands of businesses in Charlotte. Michael and I have known each other for a very long time, and it has truly been an honored partnership, but more importantly, an honored and respected friendship. He's retiring from the foundation at the end of this time, this year, and he's going to take this as a much de deserved retirement. But I have the feeling that Michael will continue to be involved in our community and will continue to advocate and push us towards a better future. Michael, thank you for all that you've contributed to our community. Because of your contributions, we know we are a better place to live. May we please have a round of applause for Michael. Michael just asked if he could say a few words, but I tell you we're on a schedule tonight, guys, so we're going to try. Um, ordinarily, I have to say, we would not have a plaque because there will be a recognition in the halls of the 15th floor close to the mayor's office with a plaque with your name on it. So thank you very thank much, you. Michael. Thank you. Another mayor's award is in honor of Harvey Gantt, who is given to citizens who have demonstrated courage and civility. This year's award, I'm proud to announce, is being presented to Malcolm Coley. Malcolm, please come down. Malcolm is the Charlotte Managing Partner at EY, an international professional services firm. But he is also one of the many people, leaders in this community, look to him for guidance, leadership, and vision. He's an authentic leader, a real example of servant leadership, and a tremendous resource for our city. He has the ability to pull people together to help address some of our community's most pressing problems. I can't list every board he has served on. However, this sampling demonstrates the depth and breadth of his impact in our community. The Charlotte Regional Business Alliance, United Way of Central Carolinas, Charlotte Sports Foundation, Charlotte Center City Partners, Foundations for the Carolina, and the list goes on and on. Most recently, Malcolm stepped up to help lead the Mayor's Racial Equity Initiative. I and other civic leaders challenge the business to join the community in Charlotte to make sure that our nonprofit and governmental organizations work to make significant contributions and lasting contributions that were about change in communities in Charlotte, these communities that have historically been disadvantaged. Malcolm again stepped up. He, along with several other people, led a working group of executives to develop this initiative to share the urgency of the work and begin building a foundation of a program that I believe will help shape our community to a more equitable and diverse one. You know, my, Malcolm and I spent lots of afternoons together 
talking to people about how this would be successful. They weren't all easy conversations. But at the end of the day, Malcolm always walked away and said, "Fine, no matter what they said, we're going to get this done. And eventually, he persuaded everyone to say something really good and do even more. Malcolm, thank you for your professionalism, your leadership, your friendship. I just want you to know that you, again, like Michael Marsicano, are like heroes to me. And you've made our Charlotte a better place to live for so many more. Thank you so thank much. You. So now let's move on to the people that we have worked with for a number of years, the outgoing council members. First of all, I want to say on behalf of the mayor and city council and this community, to all of the outgoing council members, I want to thank you for your years of service. I want you to continue to work in our community, that your future endeavors, public service, will never go out of your portfolio. But enjoy some life and some time together. And so I'm going to begin recognizing the first person that I would call someone that you could always understand how much he meant to this community, because, especially to the council, because he was the only one that read the zoning book from cover to cover. <laughs> if I could have council member Greg Phipps to join me at the podium. So we have a gift for Council Member Phipps. Um, I don't know if you know, Council Member Phipps has ha been elected to council and appointed to council. He didn't want a city skyline picture. So we gave him something that we know he loves, NASCAR. So with that, <laughs> Council Member Phipps. All right. Wow. <laughs> uh, had I known I was this popular, I might have run again. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, uh, it has been my honor to serve the citizens of Charlotte as the District 4 rep for seven years and as an at-large rep for the past year and a half. As I reflect on my council service over these eight years, it's ironic that my service was bookended by the breaking of two ties. The first back in 2005, when then Mayor McCoy, now former governor, broke the tie on my behalf for me to join the council for the first time. And then in 2021, when Mayor Lyles broke the tie that resulted in me returning to the council when I thought I had retired after three elected terms. <laughs> I've been honored to cast hundreds of critical votes while sitting at the dais behind me. Privileged to serve under five mayors, McCrory, Cannon, Claude Felter, Roberts, and Lyles, as well as serving with council luminaries like the late Susan Burgess, Don Lockman, and Claire Fallon. Even though frustrating at times, I actually enjoyed serving with my current council colleagues. <laughs> As I close, I want to thank my wife, Lemaire, and my family for putting up with the sacrifice and time commitment that comes with being a council member. I'd like to thank my chiefs of staff during my council service, Mindy Levine, Robin Laferno, Josella Palmer, and Donata Jackson, for keeping me straight and helping me avoid the snare of trouble and embarrassment as I pursued my duties on the council. I also want to thank a strong, resolute, and professional staff that keeps this great city of Charlotte running. For me, serving on the Charlotte City Council has truly been an opportunity beyond measure. Thank you very much.
Next, I'd like to introduce Councilmember Larkin Eggleston. You know, when things can be very tense sometimes when we're talking and having a debate, but Larkin always had a quick quip that would make us all kind of stop and pause and remember why we were here. And Larkin, we're going to miss that because I haven't had a sense of humor since you left. Or when you leave, I won't have a sense of humor, I guess, either. But I'd like to have you recognize um, council member retiring Larkin Eggleston. I think the mayor just politely called me a smart ass, <laughs> which I accept. I'm going to try to be the only person tonight who actually sticks to the time limit they gave us. Um, there's a, more people than I could possibly think, um, but as Councilmember Phipps said, the staff in this building does the heavy lifting. They do the hard work. They do the things that then we get to sit up here and vote on and get credit for. Uh, but there is an amazing team of 8,000 people at the city of Charlotte, and without them, um, none of what we do would be possible. Uh, to all the folks that, in both my terms that I've had the opportunity to sit on this dais with, um, thank you for your friendship, thank you for your partnership and the work we've done together. I'm proud of what we've accomplished in the last five years. We've made real progress on every single thing that we all ran saying we wanted to make a difference on, and I think this community is better off for our service, um, so thank you for yours and, and thank you for allowing me to serve beside you. Um, all my friends and family, no one gets here alone and no one is able to do this job or do it well alone, so thank you to everybody who's had a hand in my progression through uh, my public service, um, but I specifically want to thank on our staff here, uh, Amanda Birch, who day in and day out made sure that things didn't fall through the cracks for me. Um, yeah, you can clap for Amanda. <laughs> When, when you run into people in the grocery store and they say, I emailed you, and you go, did you get a response? <laughs> um, you're not sure whether they're mad at you or whether they like you or not at first. Um, they always got a response because Amanda was on top of it, and she would always make sure that I was looped in and that somebody was being taken care of before I even knew they had a problem. And so uh, she made me look good a lot, and without her, I would have absolutely drowned a month into this five years ago. So thank you, Amanda. And to my parents, um, of all the people who've helped me get here, no one's helped me get here more than my parents, Robert and Amy Eggleston. And they've also set an incredible example for me in my hometown of Winston-Salem of the fact that you can serve your community and you can make a real impact without being in elected office. And that is my intent as I leave here today. Uh, I don't know what the future holds, but I know I'll continue to serve and love this community. And I appreciate all of you for allowing me the opportunity to serve as a member of the Charlotte City Council. Thank you. From the east side of Charlotte, I want to recognize Council Member Matt Newton. Um, Matt has always got something really positive to say, and he often says it for a long time. me finish. He may take a, a long time to say it, but everybody listens. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have a lot to say, so I'm just going to get started. <laughs> Being a member of the council, alongside so many accomplished and impressive council colleagues representing District 5 and the diverse residents of East Charlotte, and also having the ability to weigh in and vote on so many crucial topics impacting the future of Charlotte as a whole for the last four and a half years has been the single greatest honor of my life. I remember when I started this journey just after I was first elected in 2017, my council colleagues and I were attending our retreat in Durham. 
We were assembled all in a room and Manager Jones asked us to give a short reason why we wanted to be council members, why we ran. And my answer was to make a difference. I became a council member to make a difference to improve the lives of those in my East Charlotte community as well as throughout all of Charlotte. And over my two and a half terms as a council member, I like to think I did just that, made a difference. As I cleaned out my office last week, I had the opportunity to reflect on much of that. I thought of how I came in as one of the millennial class of council members, participated in helping steer our city through a global pandemic, and of course played a role in establishing the ongoing vision and effort to redevelop the Eastland Mall site. However, none of it would have been possible without the help of so many friends, family, and colleagues. It was always a team effort. And so I like to take these final moments that I have as a council member and acknowledge as many folks as I can who made my council journey possible. First, thank you, Mayor Vi Lyles, and all of my council colleagues over the years for putting up with me and my loquaciousness. <laughs> the mayor will tell you that that is a word, loquacious, look it up. It means talk a lot. <laughs> Next, thank you to the city staff who likewise put up with me in that same loquaciousness. Thank you, Manager Jones, and everyone in the city manager's office, everyone in our city attorney's office, all of our department directors and heads, Stephanie Kelly, Kay Cunningham, Tamara Blue, Nan Peterson, Holly Eskridge, the list goes on, Donata Jackson, Sean Heath, Angela Charles, Jane Talon, Todd DeLong, and finally, Kim <laughs> Oliver. Once again, thank you, Kim Oliver, support specialist extraordinaire, and who my wife has affectionately referred to as my second wife <laughs> over the years. Thank you to former council member Al Austin, state representative Carla Cunningham, as well as my original campaign manager, Scott Huffman, for believing in me from the very start. And thank you to all of the community leaders who have never wavered in their passion and support for the East Side. That list includes Organizations like Charlotte East, Econ, Finco, and all of their members. Thank you, Carolyn Millen, Bobby Allman, Mimi Davis, Tracy Thomas, County Commissioner Mark Jarrell, State Representative John Autry, who's here tonight, Soil and Water Supervisor Nancy Carter, also here tonight, Maureen Jalowski, George Asciutto, Greg Asciutto, Mike Sullivan, Pastor John Brimmer, Diane and Lee Little, there's more, uh, Althea Richardson, Jason Grunewald, Diane Langevin, Debbie Dryden, Pam Fox, Michael Haithcock, Diana Ma uh, McLemore, Lita Horton, Manolo Betancourt, Vernetta Mitchell, as well as Alba Sanchez, Latin American Coalition, <laughs> Astrid Chernos, and the Simmons YMCA, Dr. Ravia Hiri, who made it in here tonight, Tisha Boyd, Renee Mary Dubois, Catherine Alexander, Corinne Mack, Cameron Pruitt, Dan and Peggy Rady, Pam Morton, Diana Davis, Robert Dawkins, <laughs> Dave and Cricket Molinero, Tim Cinema, and Cross on Southeast. Thank you all. I am so proud of all that we have accomplished together over all of these years. Finally, yes, finally, I want to recognize two more people who are especially important to me and are in attendance tonight. The first is my surrogate grandmother, Lee Stone. And the second, and the second is my rock, my reason, my wife, Tiffany Arroyo Newton, who's also here tonight. You're going to make me cry, Lee. <laughs> she has stayed up with me during many sleepless nights, covered in so many different ways whenever I've been overwhelmed by work, and has always been my chief advisor and strongest confidant. I'm only possible because of her. Thank you so much, babe. I love you. As the sun sets on my time as a council member, <laughs> it will always continue to rise in the east. With that, I want to wish our incoming District 5... I want to wish our incoming District 5 Council member, Marjorie Molina, as well as the next council, Marjorie Molina, as well as the next council, the best of luck as they all begin their journey into this next council term. Thank you all again and good night. Now I'd like to recognize 
um, Council Member, Mayor Pro Tem, um, Julie Isolt. I'm just going to say this. Um, if you look up or think about what champion means in this community, Julie has championed so many issues from the time that she decided to serve as a council member. But more importantly, she has championed our council to work together. Her leadership will be truly missed. Julie. Thank you, Mayor Lyles. <clears throat> this is still daunting after seven years. I still don't like to speak in the public, <laughs> public, public speaking. It's been a wild ride, I will say. Um, my first month on council, we saw HB2. <laughs> and then we saw the partial repeal of HB2. And this is not in any definite order, but we won the All-Star game, then we lost it, then we got it back. The Panthers went to the Super Bowl we got an MLS franchise. George Floyd was murdered. Protesters took to the streets and to this chamber for Black Lives Matters, for immigrant rights, and for workers' rights. We even saw some of them jump on the dais while we were sitting there. We tripled our housing bond and put millions of dollars into community safety reform. We finally did pass a non-discrimination ordinance. We dealt with COVID in Tent City. I don't need to tell you all that. Probably some of the tr most trying times in our city's history. And we had business closings. We had corporate relocations like Honeywell and Centene, and then we lost Centene. We passed the first comprehensive vision plan in 40 years. <laughs> and we passed the first ever unified development ordinance. These are just some of the highs and the lows and pivotal moments over the past seven years. Through even the most challenging times, though, I have always believed it to be a great privilege to serve the people of Charlotte, including those who didn't always see eye to eye with me. I've learned a lot from all of you about myself and about our city. To the new council, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that this job will mean as much to you as it has to me. I ask that, that in all you do, always put the city first and recognize that the people do not represent a monolithic group. The more Charlotte grows, the harder it will be to make everyone happy. Big decisions, big votes will rarely have obvious and easy answers. And that's why it's so important to work together with your colleagues. Pick up the phone, talk to each other, collaborate, be open to compromise, and when necessary, in the quest to find solutions that are best for our community, remember that if the collective action isn't what you wanted, be willing to accept that it isn't personal. It's part of a very difficult job. With that, I want to say thank you to the mayor, to my colleagues, to the city manager, and as we said, to the dedicated staff of this city who makes everything work. It's, it's, it's like an iceberg, and most of it's under the water and you don't even see it. And I, I'm really honored to have worked with so many tremendous people. To my husband, Tom, my sons, Jack and Joe, who are here, and my daughter, Kate, in New York, and to all of my family, especially my sister, who's always been there for me, and have put up with interrupted conversations, weekends, and vacations. And especially to Robin Laferno, who worked 24-7 to keep me on track. Robin is a true gem. I'm not going to name everybody else in the community, but <laughs> <laughs> to the community, thank you for allowing me to serve you. It's been an honor of a lifetime. And lastly, I just want to say that we live in an amazing city that is not perfect, but we always try to be better, more welcoming, and inclusive of all people. Even when we trip over our own feet, we get back up and we try again. And I am proud to have been a Charlotte City Council member in a city that I love calling home. Thank you.
So as these retiring members, um, we want to again ask everyone in the audience to give them a round of applause. Now it's time to make that move to the next generation of um, council members elected, elect. And now, in order to do that appropriately, I'd like to ask our city clerk, Stephanie Kelly, to read the results of the 2022 election. Results of the municipal election held July 26, 2022. For the city of Charlotte mayor, by Alexander Lyles, elected, 49,624. Stephanie Day Zara Chaga Bilba, 22,646. Also 27 write ins. For the City of Charlotte City Council at Large, Dimple Ashmira, elected, 46,751. Braxton Winston II, elected, 46,045. 46, Lawana Slack Mayfield elected 42,582. James Mitchell Jr. elected 42,509. Kyle Lubke 28,600. 28, David Merrill 25,385. Carrie Olinsky, 25,000. Charlie Mulligan, 24,698. And five write ins. City of Charlotte, City Council District 1. Dante Anderson, elected, 9,164, with 12 write ins. City of Charlotte, Council District Number 2. Mary Lineberger Barnett, 1,514. Malcolm Graham, elected, 6,965. City of Charlotte City Council District Number 3, James H. Bowers, 1,471. Victoria Watlington, elected, 5,008. City of Charlotte City Council District Number 4, Renee Perkins Johnson, elected, 5,986. City of Charlotte City Council District Number 5, Marjorie Molina, elected 6,136. City of Charlotte City Council District Number 6, Tariq Bakari, elected 9,889. Stephanie Hand, 9,532. City of Charlotte City Council District Number 7, Ed Driggs, elected 9,042 with 34 write-ins. Those are the results. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And now you've heard the people that have been elected to represent you in this community, and I'd like to have them join us at the dais. time to begin the official parts of this meeting and so I would like to invite Judge Karen Edie Williams to join me along with my family at the podium. I think you guys can sit. Please do. I think it's going to be and thank you. So you guys know the stars of my life are here, right? Audrey and Maya. And I know that um, Aisha's Haley and Mercy 
are watching us this evening. And so this is what makes it possible to serve because I know if I do well, they will do well in the future. Judge Williams, Edie Williams, would you please do this oath of office for me? Yes, ma'am. And I think my son is going to hold the Bible along with the mm -hmm. child. Okay. okay, let's see how this works. <laughs> please place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I, Vi Alexander Lyles. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. And will be thankful and bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers. And to the constitutional powers. And authorities. And authorities. Which are or may be established. Which are or may be established. For the government thereof. For the government thereof. And that I sh shall endeavor to support. And that I will endeavor to support. Maintain and defend. Maintain and defend. The constitution of said state. The constitution of said state. Not inconsistent with. Not inconsistent consistent with the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And that I will discharge and I will discharge the duties of my office. The duties of my office as mayor of the city of Charlotte. As mayor of the city of Charlotte. North Carolina. North Carolina. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. You're duly sworn. Congratulations. Thank you very much. In the spirit of timeliness, we're asking everyone to limit their comments during the ceremony to about two minutes. Now, I know that is a tall order for some of us. And so in order to do this, we've decided to have a little bit of an incentive. So when you're at three minutes, the clerk will start ding, 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 ding. I, isn't that right, Stephanie? We're, three minutes. That's what we're, we would agreed upon. So I'm going to try to lead by example. To say that the past three years have been a challenge seems like a real understatement. Every aspect of our community, our nation, our world changed because of the COVID pandemic. And yet I'm incredibly proud of how this body and our community rose to the challenge of the pandemic and sprang into action. City Council, along with staff, worked tirelessly for weeks months and years to help ensure that critical services were maintained and that we created a system to stabilize our community and prepare for our community to bounce back. The pandemic didn't make the other problems go away. Economic opportunity, upward mobility, affordable housing, gentrifying neighborhoods, a rapidly growing population requiring new and different approaches to transit, all of those issues remained and in many ways were amplified. Again, this body and this organization pushed forward. We made important and significant strides. The 2040 Comprehensive Plan, U the UDO, significant increases in funding for affordable housing, the Infusion Fund to support arts and culture, equity initiatives and new commissions to help manage growth and stabilize development. We still have work to do. But we should celebrate and recognize our democracy has created this body, which today reflects our values, that the people elected to represent our residents have integrity and a strong desire to move our community forward. I believe we're unified in what we want, a better quality of life for our families and better opportunities for our children. Now, not everyone has the same definition of quality of life, and that's okay. We have to work with each other to build that for a better Charlotte. We will continue to move forward on affordable housing. People who work in our city should be able to live in our city. We will continue to move forward on creating 
better transit and transportation. We will continue to move forward on creating a safer Charlotte. A safer Charlotte is a place where we work to address the root causes of violence, where people have economic opportunity, where we are focused on developing our workforce, where we see the value of being the center of this region, and where we are honest about the history of underinvestments in communities of color. We can and will work actively to address all of these issues, and I'm really looking forward to the next term. Thank you very much. So now I'd like to invite our council elects, who well, I've already invited you up here, so you're here. That's, that's not where I am. So um, what I would like to do is invite um, council, the, the f members of our council elect, Anderson, Molina, and Mitchell, Mayfield, Sl Slack Mayfield. It's going to take me a moment, Luana, to get to that. So, so. <laughs> All right, thank you and their families to join us at the dais um, so that these council members can be sworn in. Just All of our families. Yeah, just family the new ones. I believe that's what it tells me to do. Okay. Okay. I think that what, okay, this is what we're doing. I'm sorry, it's everyone that's going to be sworn in, but I would like to invite all families, all families for all of the 11 council members, please come on down and join us at the dais. I guess we're staying here. <coughs> Did I get everything? <laughs> 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 Does anyone need a Bible? Anyone, anybody need a Bible? Or a Bible is not required, but it is. Now, the good thing is we have big families, right? start snapping away right now um, so that we can get all of this in. Yes? Yes? <laughs> all right, is everyone ready? All right. I'm going to say I, and then you're going to all state your name so that all of so, I please state your name. I, I Brett, 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 Brett. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. States. The Constitution of the United States. That I will be faithful. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance to the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers and to the constitutional powers and authorities and authorities which are or may be established which are or may be established for the government thereof for the government thereof and that I and that I will endeavor will endeavor to support maintain and defend to support maintain and defend 
Constitution of said state, the Constitution of said state, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, not inconsistent with the Constitution of the United States, and that I will discharge, and that I will discharge the duties of my office, the duties of my office, as a Charlotte City Council member, as a Charlotte City Council member of the City of Charlotte, of the City of Charlotte, North Carolina, North Carolina. Best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge and ability, and ability. So help me God. So help me God. You are now sworn we in. Did it. <laughs> So as soon as the family members have enough photos and pictures, we're going to ask council members to make remarks. Um, and I'm going to start with Mr. Driggs, if he is, if it's, I <laughs> saw so I'm trying to get out of here. Um, so, go ahead, follow your mother. When, as mayor, what we generally do is we start at one part of the dais and we move around so you can be prepared with your cameras for the person that you want to make sure that you capture as they are making their remarks. And I am going to remind us that we can do this in two minutes. Honestly, we really can. So I'm sitting here, right? <laughs> Shall I go? <laughs> so the bear, the bear. Oh, check out what it does. <laughs> All right. If everybody's soon to be settled down. All right, Mr. Driggs, you're recognized. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ed Driggs, Charlotte City Council District 7. As my colleagues have noted, our first debt on council is, in fact, to the staff. So, Mayor Jones, you have assembled. Mayor Jones? Mayor Jones? Look, <laughs> That's okay, I'm fine. <laughs> You know what? I didn't oh, really even. Mayor Jones! <laughs> I may have planted a seed. Um, no, I, uh, the professionalism of your staff and the way they support us is what makes everything work. So I just want to collectively acknowledge all of them. I do need to shout out also to Kim Oliver, who is the one that keeps me from walking in the wrong direction and gets me to where I need to be. Kim, thank you. Uh, I didn't have an opponent this year, so my list of thank yous is perhaps shorter than everybody else's. Uh, I do want to thank the people who are hardy enough to donate to my campaign anyway. I thought that was very special. Um, I also want to thank the people who voted for me. Uh, in, in, in this situation, I appreciate that expression of support and confidence. But of course, most of all, I have to thank Caroline, she's Aww. sitting up there, whose wise counsel and unwavering support have kept me on an even keel since long before I joined council. Sweetie, thank you. Um, I've emphasized in the past that I'm committed to serve all of my constituents, whether they voted for me or not, whether they belong to my party or not. In the end, all of us on council make decisions that affect Charlotte as a whole, and we work to do what will improve life in our city for everyone. To our departing colleagues, I wish to say what a pleasure it was working with you and serving with you, and I hope you will enjoy continued success in your future endeavors. To my new and not so new colleagues, uh, I am excited about the prospects for the coming term. It's only 15 months, but we have a lot of work to do. Let us all pull together to build on Charlotte's many strengths and be a place that everyone who lives here can be proud to call home. Thank you. I'd now like to recognize Council Member Victoria Watlington. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank each of you for your commitment and passion to our city. It has been my pleasure to serve on council these last two and a half years. 
and I'm especially grateful to the residents of District 3 for your vote of confidence in allowing me to continue to serve as your representative. These last few years, our community has demonstrated resilience in the face of adversity, and together, we've made significant progress on our goals. Through the hard work and support of family, friends, staff, Ms. Joe, and community leaders, many of whom are in the room, we've been able to do a lot. We've drafted our city's Safe Charlotte Plan, changing our approach to policing and violent crime prevention in our community. We've made investments in our neighborhoods, businesses, and our grassroots organizations through our Corridors of Opportunity Program for historically disadvantaged communities. We've passed our city's non-discrimination ordinance to protect all workers. We've secured millions of dollars for congestion mitigation in Still Creek, and we've adopted source of income protections in city-supported housing. We've increased District 3 representation on city boards and commissions, putting you front and center in decision making. And we've also successfully negotiated community benefits in new developments, restoring true community-led planning. Together, we've proven that we know what it takes to deliver for the district and for our city. To the outgoing council members, I thank you for your service. And to the incoming council members, I welcome you, your unique gifts, and your voices to our broader discussion. As I look around the dais and this chamber, I'm encouraged and I'm hopeful. Though our term is shortened, our, our view remains long. We will steward the city with wisdom, unity, vision, and most of all, love. Once again, I thank you, and I look forward to continuing the work. Councilmember Tark Bakari. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Chapter one. <laughs> uh, well, I'll start by they're coming back in the room. If you if you've ever had nine, seven, and five year olds, you'll understand they use the restroom a lot. <laughs> um, some thank yous. First of all, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my dear wife there. As you, if you can't tell, she has like eight full-time jobs, <laughs> one of which, though, is being half of a council member. Uh, because it, all the times that you community members reach out with different issues, problems to solve, a lot of times it's her that sits there and brainstorms and troubleshoots through things or uh, figures out ways to keep me focused every day on a lot of the things that uh, we both know are important. So this doesn't happen any of it without you and I I don't uh, I probably don't recognize that as much as I should but right now is a good time to reflect and say um, it doesn't happen none of this without you um, I, I also want to thank my supporters and friends everyone who has done so much to uh, to make to make all of this happen um, we, we couldn't do it without you as well as all the the, the candidates that run and weren't successful this time um, on all fronts, we seem to have a, a great bench in the future. Uh, staff as well, very grateful on, on that front. And then my kids, last, kids stand up, take your bow, <laughs> stand up, Chase, Chase, you gotta stand up, dude. You're, you're not even listening. Stand up, everybody, see that? You, take your bows, yes? Maybe you'll listen for a few seconds? No? He's busy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> This explains so much. <laughs> yeah. To my kids, I have the greatest pride ever to be able to set this example for you here today and a great expectation that you will also serve this community uh, as you get older. So pay attention. <laughs> um, and then finally, the, the, the questions that we decide to ask and that we attempt to answer are really what makes the difference between a good city and a great city. And in my opinion, the biggest success we've had in the last five years was something the vast majority of people have not and will never hear of, horizontal integration. We uh, sat down five years ago and asked a very simple question. How can we become a more effective government and instead of operating in these vertical silos uh, like affordable housing or transportation, can we overhaul the organization to operate in horizontal outcomes? 
focusing on economic growth or upward mobility across all departments, across all functions. Uh, that is a huge win that no one will hear about, but the future decades will benefit from that restructuring. We don't have unlimited resources, so the questions we choose to ask are everything as we move forward. And what we have to decide as a new body is, what questions are we gonna ask over the next year, year and a half? Um, I think that there are some amazing opportunities for us as a group. Uh, we, we recruited and retained over 50,000 jobs in the last five years, 50,000 to the city. Um, how can we make that 100,000 over the next five years? These are the size and scope questions we should be asking. How can we drastically and measurably reduce crime, improve officer retention and morale? How can we anticipate what city infrastructure looks like 20 years from now and then get there 10 years before anybody else does? So I'm excited, I'm hopeful for this next term. We need to ask you, the right Mr. questions. Bukhari. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, Mr. Graham, <laughs> Malcolm Graham. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I look forward to working with you over the next year and a half. Uh, to the new members and returning members, I look forward to working with each and every one of you as well. And to my supporters and friends from District 2, thank you very much for an amazing victory with over 80% of the popular vote, both in the terms of the primary and the general election. Um, I hear the challenge. When I was at the polls, uh, a young lady pulled me aside, an elder lady, and said, um, some people like titles and our positions more than they like the work assigned to them. And she said, Malcolm, you've always been dedicated to the work. And she's right. Um, I, I hate campaigning. I love when the campaign is over and when I can get to work. And there's plenty of work to be done, and I'm glad I have another term to do so. Uh, I think there's a lot of work that we collectively can do as a community and we have to kind of follow through on what we started. Uh, the dire need for action around affordable housing and homelessness and doing something about it versus just talking about it. The delicate balance between economic development and revitalization of our communities and the impact and effects of gentrification. Making it easier to get around the city with public transportation that's affordable, reliable, and sustainable. And lastly, ensuring we're making the Queen City a safe space for everyone to live. We made a lot of progress on these issues uh, over the last year and a half, three years really. We have a lot of momentum, and the momentum is what will take us to move forward. I'm excited about where we're going. I'm excited about what, where we're headed. I think we have the talent, um, the resources, uh, and the wherewithal to make sure the better place to, um, tomorrow than it is today. If we were all pulled together, uh, understand our strengths and our weakness, and the opportunities that lie in front of us, the threats that are there as well, and being willing to do things differently to achieve different results. I think we have the ingredients to do all of those things if we dare to think big. I dare to think big for the residents of District 2. We've done a lot of work. My goal is to make District 2 issues city priorities. I think we started that already, and we'll continue the work. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to recognize as mayor the first time council member Dante Anderson. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. I feel as if I don't need to thank anyone because council member Newton has taken care of all <laughs> for us. But seriously, um, it's a tremendous honor to sit here and um, represent District 1 and all of the legacy and all that is before us as the first district of the city of Charlotte and everything that is before us as the Queen City. Uh, I am a native daughter of the city and a descendant of Brooklyn Village, Piedmont Court, Southside Homes. I represent all of that struggle, the hard work, that it all took us to get to this point. There's such a tremendous uh, future and opportunity for the city as we move forward. 
to realize and rationalize um, the UDO and to ensure that the charm and the heritage of the city of Charlotte does not get wiped away as we embrace growth. Malcolm is right in that we have a tremendous opportunity to look at affordable housing. And I was one who was it took advantage of affordable housing um, as I grew up, and I know the benefits of that. So we have to ensure that we protect affordable housing and protect the naturally occurring affordable housing that exists in the city, as well as embrace economic development and higher wages for everyone who works dearly and hard day in and day out in the city. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my family and my love circle up in the balcony. Um, I have loved ones. Nieces and nephews, line sisters, everyone that, that came out to embrace me and acknowledge this, this moment. I am so hopeful for not only the next 15 months, but the next 15 years. And we are in a place where um, I belong to an organization that embraces the notion of fortitude. Amen. And what it takes to really brace down into courage and bravery and sometimes pain to ensure that we are moving forward intentionally. And I can assure you as citizens of Charlotte that I will do that to the best of my ability as long as I hold a seat in this office. Thank you all very much. I have now the honor of welcoming back Lawana Slack Mayfield and recognizing her. Ms. Mayfield? Yes. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Mayor. I would like to thank all who voted for me to return to continue the work that I started many years ago. I served you for eight years proudly, and as the District 3 representative at that time, we were able to achieve a lot of wins, not only for our district, but also for our city. But I want to also take the moment to acknowledge some who are here tonight and some who were not able to be with me. I'm not going to go through the full names as my former colleague did. So David, Ryan, <laughs> Daniel, Emma, Ms. Nina, Cameron, Eileen, Tracy, Daniel, Annetta, Willie, Rob, Marty, Uday, Candace, Rashawn, and others who I didn't even know were supporting me. All for your hours of canvassing with me in the heat, <laughs> passing out materials at the polls, helping to create my materials and guidance through both the primary and the general election as I stepped into this role again. I also cannot let the opportunity pass to thank my wife, Jaleesa. In two weeks, we will be celebrating our six year wedding anniversary, 16 <laughs> years together. Who also volunteered at the polls and for many years has been my greatest support system as I focus on community service as long and long before we were together and throughout our years together. And when I chose to return to school full time, you were there in my corner 110% for those who, of you who are a little older, who think it might be too late, it's not. It's never too late to bet on yourself and to invest in yourself and to work towards a longer way to go, which I was able to do. I am looking forward to working alongside of my colleagues some. We have done some really amazing things together across party lines and across personal ideals. I look forward to working alongside of you, Mayor. I look forward to working under your leadership as you continue to guide us. And I look forward to serving our community once again. Thank you. I hope the council will allow me the privilege of introducing my family to you. Many of you knew I grew up um, 96 miles from Charlotte down in Columbia, South Carolina. And um, I grew up in a very big family. 
and I remember them with just great love and share, and um, they, uh, they've always had my back. And so my youngest brother, Ronald, is here. My cousins, Christy and Donzetta, my niece, Whitney. And I have to also say that um, my friends that I can always call upon on that front row, I want you to know that I recognize you, Londa, Bob, all of you. Benita, Selma, Kay, they're, they're rocks. Um, they, they steady me and they make it possible for me to do what I do. Um, the kids had to leave. You could see where they were going really quickly, like, you know, like that. But I want to say how much I couldn't be who I am today without my family that raised me. So thank you very much. I'm going to recognize another returning, returning colleague, Council Member James Mitchell. Okay, thank you. First of all, let me thank my queen, Joan Higginbotham, and my blessings, Kayla Nicole, for allowing Daddy to serve this city once again as a public official. I would like to thank my pastor, Jerry, Dr. Jerry Cannon, and members of C.N. Jenkins Presbyterian Church for all your prayers and your support. Let me thank my sister, Kim Mitchell Thompson, serving as my campaign manager, but also serving uh, like a little sister do to kick the big brother in the hips every once in a while. <laughs> I would like to thank all the volunteers and the contributor, contributors of Team Mitchell 2022. Your encouragement, your perseverance, and your guidance, that's why I'm here standing on your shoulders. And to the voters of the city of Charlotte, thank you so much for allowing me to do something I enjoy doing, being the biggest cheerleader for our city. I really appreciate this opportunity. Someone told me, Smudge, you go down there and don't leave again. Amen. <laughs> I will not leave again. <laughs> I look forward to working with this mayor and the city council. Yes, 15 months is a short period of time, but I think the talent around this dais, we can accomplish great things. A special thank you to the Charlotte Sports Foundation and 100 Black Men. This week, they sponsored a successful Aggie Eagle Classic. And as a proud graduate of North Carolina Central University, <laughs> we finally won. <laughs> thank you, everybody. I'd like to now recognize a, re a council member in her second term, Council Member Renee Johnson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It feels like longer, doesn't it? <laughs> Some nights it does. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to give all glory to God for the opportunity, the health, the strength to serve. Thank you to my loving husband, Bernard, you have supported me in this journey and all the journeys we've walked through together for the last 30 years. I could not be here without you, so thank you. I want to thank my children, India and BJ. You are the fuel to my fire, and I praise God daily for trusting me with such precious gifts. To my grandchildren, to all of my grandchildren, but to Bishop, who's here tonight, he wanted me to thank you all for voting for his Nina. <laughs> thank you to the County Democratic Party, the Democratic Women, and the Senior Dems. Thank you to all of the organizations who endorsed me. Dearest Price and, and Black Charlotte, she was my first endorsement, and she endorsed me again, so I thank you, and I don't take that for granted. Thank you to the Black Political Caucus, to the African American Caucus, the Charlotte Post, and Equality NC. Thank you for your support. I am honored to serve you. To William Volts of Unite Here 23, I called and you came. Yeah. And you brought hardworking, dedicated volunteers who believed in me. I pledge to always be a voice for your union and all of the labor unions who supported and endorsed me, including the North Carolina AFL-CIO and the Service Employees International Union. I want to thank my small and mighty team, Dave, 
Beverly, Levester, Tony, Dan, Mr. Kincaid, Cynthia, and Brandy. We did it again. To my late campaign manager, Mr. Bill Brown, whom we lost to COVID, he was a special force for our team, and I honor him tonight, and I will continue to honor him in my work. His, to his daughter, Mia, who is watching, thank you for sharing your father with us. A special uh, shout out to my campaign volunteers, my donors, my supporters, my family, my friends. I want to thank Latoya White and Robin Laflerno, who are my uh, city assistant staff. Uh, they do make us look good, so I appreciate you, Latoya. Um, thank you to Council Member Al Austin. He's one of the first people that I met here in Charlotte. He introduced me to the Black Political Caucus and the local politics, so thank you. I acknowledge him tonight. Most importantly, to District 4, I'm honored and I'm humbled by your overwhelming support. To the precinct leaders who are watching and those who came out tonight, Dr. Gray and her sister Ida, Tony Mingo, and William Mitchell, thank you for your leadership and your dedication to your precincts. Mm -hmm. Finally, to the voters of District 4, <clears throat> you showed up and you showed out. And I want to thank you. With your support, we won with 57% of the vote. That was a, a historical victory for a multi-candidate race. You have spoken and you've given a mandate. You said that you expect your representative to ask questions, <laughs> to challenge the status quo, and uh, who will pit people over politics and speak truth to power. I am honored to serve you. I am honored to continue to serve you. And I thank you for your support. Council Member Braxton Winston. Five years ago, I sat at this dais um, and said we would be strongest if we acted like a fist instead of individual fingers. Nothing could have illustrated that truth better than how our previous council was able to govern when we found ourselves given the de facto task of creating a municipal pandemic playbook in 2020. Our communication as a council, mayor, and a well-managed staff allowed Charlotte to set many examples of how to best govern in a crisis no one expected. In 2019, I encouraged us to govern with a policy lens of equity. Though the policy making came with its challenges, we were able to pass consequential policy that represents systemic changes not seen in this city in over 50 years. These policies are built on a foundation of developing an equitable Charlotte. As I sit before you here in 2022, I believe the phrase of this term is laser focused. Our constituents are demanding us to think big and work together in continuing our systemic approach to building an equitable Charlotte. Whether it is transit and transportation, affordable housing, the environment, or economic development, our constituents want us to think big and work as a team during this abbreviated term. I would like to thank the people of Charlotte for entrusting me with the privilege and responsibility of representing you for a third term as we work on building a more equitable, accessible, and interconnected Charlotte. I would like to thank all who volunteered their time, resources, and treasure to support our campaign over the years. Without your support, it would be impossible to connect with so many people during this campaign and over the years as we have done. To the staff of the City of Charlotte, thank you for sharing your expertise with our city. You all inspire me to come to work prepared and engaged. You share the same passion to serve our, uh, our constituents as I do. And thank you for making all of us up here look good. I would particularly like to thank Alana Bailey and Donata Jackson and the whole constituent services staff. Though they are not able to be here today, I want to thank my children, Braxton, Cheyenne, and Brooklyn. You're the reason why I wake up and do this every day. I may not be able to answer every question about the universe, but you energize me to continue to figure out how to make this city a place you are proud to call home. Your perseverance through adversity is beyond your years. I love you all very much. I would like to thank my parents, Stella and David Winston. Unknowingly, growing up as the son of a New York City school teacher and a fireman taught me the value of a well-supported municipal workforce. My mother is able to be here tonight, mommy. Uh, the love and dedication that your family was able to pour into me and Brandon through you and my father taught me to love the city that I call home, that no matter how difficult the environment, there is a pathway to the world that you want to see. That energy is the root of how I govern today, and I'm, I am grateful for that. 
And last but certainly not least, Kayla Jacobs. You're my best friend and the brains behind this whole operation. I would not be here without you. You are the smartest North Carolina Democrat I know. <laughs> now, let's get to work. Thank you. Thank you. Returning Council Member Dimple Ajmira. Ms. Ajmira. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Today marks the beginning of my third term. It's been almost six years. And I've grown tremendously in this past six years as a public servant. And in, many of you in this room have been my mentors, my teachers, and my supporters, so thank you. As a mom, wife, sister, and a proud daughter of immigrants, I am deeply humbled by the overwhelming support that I have received. Thanks to my family, especially the love of my life, my husband, Babo, who is here, my daughter, Charlotte, who is our 14-month-old, my mom, who has traveled here from California, and our extended family. Thank you all so much. I couldn't do this without all of you. It truly takes a village. And to our constituents, Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I will not disappoint you. I'm grateful for our team, Uncle Dan, Margie, Jane, and our incredible interns, Kunjal, who is here, who has been a rock, and the entire team. This youth, incredible youth, gives me so much hope for our future. And thanks to our staff, especially Amanda Birch. Amanda keeps me on my toes at all times. But I couldn't do this without her by my side and the entire City of Charlotte staff. And to all my colleagues, congratulations, and I pledge to work with every single one of you. We have a very passionate council with many dreams and goals but a very short term, so we must stay focused. I know I'm confident that we can put our differences aside for the benefit of all Charlotteans. I often think of other mothers and fathers when I rock our 14-month-old daughter Charlotte to sleep about our next generation, and we all want the same thing, a safe, thriving, and a healthy community for our children and for our grandchildren. As a new mom, that call to action feels more real and urgent than ever before. And my daughter, Charlotte, has been my guiding light and my purpose. So let us shine the light of unity, proceed in peace and truth, my brothers and sisters. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome for the first time our new District 5 representative, Marjorie Molina. Thank you, Madam Mayor, so much. I am humbled to even sit at this dais and look at you, and I've admired you from afar, and I, I thank God for the opportunity to serve. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, my colleagues. Um, I had something special written, but I'm one of those people that you'll learn. I like to speak from my heart. Um, so I, I, I got to start from the top. Um, my children, uh, who I actually got to look up and see, my babies, Kaylee and Jaden, <laughs> mommy, love you with my whole soul. Um, you are my motivation in, in life, and I... You are the reason that I serve. Um, I have two people in my life who I have the privilege to call mom and dad, where if you see them, you'll realize we got different eyes, you know. <laughs> Theirs is blue and mine's brown, but still it's no, no big deal, right? Uh, <laughs> but I would like to acknowledge uh, James and Jean Clary. Aww. I love you so much. Um, you mean the world to me. 
and I am so honored that you're here with me for this, for this, for this event. Um, and I just, um, there's so many people to thank. I look up and I see John Autry. Uh, John was the first person to take me under his wing. I remember on his very first campaign, I walked up to him, and before his campaign actually, and I'm like, um, you know what, I'd like to learn about service. He kind of looks at me like, where did this girl come from, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he started inviting me to all kind of opportunities where I could learn more about service. And, you know, the rest is history. I, I kind of folded into, you know, serving our community. And I am thankful for so many of the opportunities that you allowed me to feel. So thank you so much. Uh, I see Robert beside him. And I see my girl, Carolyn. I love you, Carolyn. Uh, Carolyn is one of the most dedicated members of our District yes. 5 family, and I am so honored to have her support. Um, outgoing member Matt Newton read you a list of so many dedicated people. Uh, Matt's hard to follow, but uh, Matt, thank you. I've known Matt for over a decade, and Matt, uh, once I won the primary election, he just took me right under his wing and he said, Marjorie, let me show you a few things. I'm looking right in the face of Larkin Eggleston and you guys, Larkin is the reason that I'm here. Larkin tapped me on the shoulder and he asked me to consider it uh, while I was in grad school, by the way, mm. yes. um, which I had to think about a lot because I had the, uh, the weight of finishing my master's degree at UNC Charlotte as well. So. Um, I accepted that call, and I am glad that we've done that. Um, I want to mention a few people who I uh, neglect to mention. First of all, I have family and friends in the audience. I love you. Thank you for being here with me. Um, Will and, Ry and Riley Moody. Um, for a long time, the three of us, we were a team of three. And Will only signed up to be my treasurer, but Will Moody is someone that I feel like God sent to me directly because he stepped in where we had gaps and for a long time it was just he and I. And along the way, we were able to have other people join us. Uh, Sam Spencer, Rebecca Wilden, you guys, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You mean the world to me. I love you. Um, I'm looking right at the face of this one person, Rafael Prieto, um, who I've worked with over the years. We've done the Afro-Latino celebration. I don't know if many of you know, but I speak Spanish fluently. I read, write, and speak Spanish as a second language. Um, and so I've had the gift and the honor to be accepted in the Latino and Spanish-speaking community. And I am honored to have that portion of service. So thank you so much. And I look forward to serving with my colleagues. To begin um, the process for electing a mayor pro tem, I will now open the floor for motion of nominations. Mr. <laughs> I was about to say, Mr. Smudgy. <laughs> I've been called worse, I, I, man. I, I, I know. I, my apologies. Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> uh, mayor and council like to nominate Braxton Winston for mayor pro tem. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, um, all in favor of the nomination would, of Mayor um, uh, Miss Molina. I would like to um, place a substitute motion on the floor. That's my very first motion, uh, and I would like to motion for Dimple as your mayor. All right. Do we have a second? I, I, mayor Pro. <clears throat> I'm sorry, <laughs> Miss Ashmira. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm honored, uh, Council Member Molina, by your courage and by your trust and faith in my ability to lead. But I, we must unify and place the needs of our people first over my personal ambition. And this has been a very difficult decision for me. Um, and there is a time and place for everything. As the top vote getter, I have earned the overwhelming support across all demographics, and I'm ready to do the work of the mayor pro tem. However, 
there is a time we must realize whether to lead or to help someone else lead. And I know that we will be in good hands with Council Member Winston. So without our unity and collaboration, we can't be at our best and strongest for the people of Charlotte. So I, though I appreciate <clears throat> Council Member Molina's motion and her trust and faith in my ability, we cannot govern with closed doors. And I'm going to help Council Member Winston help lead our city as our next mayor pro tem. So we have a motion on the floor and a second. Um, all in favor of supporting Mr. Winston as our mayor pro tem, please raise your hands. That is unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> thank all of you for your attendance and your um, um, patience with us. This is truly a celebration of democracy, something that we should all be very proud of. And so with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? So I move. do. So move in a second. And I do. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you very much, everyone.